I did, or Kayla did send out a packet of information to you, Steve. I do not anticipate, I, I mean, I don't expect you guys to read it all. Obviously, I was on vacation last week and Shana and I have just been trying to decide what information to give you because there's a lot of it. So, um, so I put together that and what I thought we could do, especially knowing that Fred's not here too. I don't know how comfortable you feel about it, but we could set up another meeting to vote on it and not vote on it today. Just sort of consider it and think about it and do site visits or whatever you want to do. Okay. <clears throat> And I know Paul Burns is here and he wants to talk about it with you. So why don't we do this? We'll start with Shana. If you can walk us through what the current options are, then we can, I'll turn it over. You can talk for a while, Paul, and tell them what you think you want. And then we will chat as a group. Does that sound good? John, feel free to jump in if you need. Um, so we just wanted to kind of get the uh, Capital Projects Committee's opinion on um, how to move forward with Rock Harbor. Um, because over the last five years, we've spent quite a bit of money down there. Um, so we want to make sure that we're spending it appropriately and we're getting the most um, bang for our buck. Because um, we have gotten quite a bit of grant funding, but this is utilizing the remainder of the capital funding that we'd have. Um, so originally we contracted with Foth Engineering for $229,570 to permit and design an 80 foot long ADA ramp um, and push the floats out into the harbor further. Um, it's come to our attention recently that the ADA is not required. Um, so that's why we have another option which would keep the, you know, we would push the floats back out into the harbor to get more water under them at low tide. And we would improve the um, angle of the ramp, but it wouldn't improve substantially, uh, but it would decrease the, the steepness at low tide. So it would still achieve that goal. It would not meet ADA requirements, um, but it would improve the accessibility at that at the lower tide. Um, so that option does save us um, about up to $165,000 at the high end. At the low end, it would save about $100,000. But though these are, you know, pretty rough estimates. This is a very preliminary estimate from our engineer as to how much we could save. Um, for the first option, the ADA option, we would need to relocate the access path. Um, as well as the water and the electricity and install a poured concrete landing ramp in the dune, which may be a little bit tricky for permitting. Um, and they, the, the Conservation Commission and other environmental agencies do like to look at alternatives that have less impacts. Um, so keeping the dock where it is might be uh, more of an environmentally preferred alternative and um, in either case, there would need to be a lot of in-water work where they do take out the pilings and relocate them. So that part of the environmental permitting is not, we can't really change that aspect of it. Um, so those are pretty much the two options to go forward. And then we have the option of taking the funding that we have, which is about uh, 569,000, hello, <laughs> plus the- Here. Uh, I think we've spent about $22,000 on the FOSS contract. So we'd have about $200,000 to add to that. Um, so we could turn that funding back over to other projects for reappropriation. So we have a little bit over $850,000 left if we don't spend more FOSS money. Correct. Okay. We may have some additional invoices that we would have to pay for the month of August, but Okay. It would it would be roughly two hundred thousand dollars that we would turn over. For um, okay, run that for what? So one? we have uh, our remaining balance. Yeah. With our contract with Foth is five hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars one hundred and forty eight, and if we add 
if we pay FOSS, we have about $200,000 roughly. So we would add $200,000 onto that 569 that we have. And that would be the full amount of money that we could then allocate to other projects. Okay, sorry to be so thick, but if we pay FOSS, we get 200,000 more? We so we, we only don't paid, spend yeah. more <clears throat> if we don't spend anything else. If we cancel our contract with them, right. we've paid them about twenty two thousand dollars. We may have, Free would have, yeah, yeah, we may have to pay them a few thousand more, we'd save that money, okay. and then we would save the rest of the two. We haven't spent that yet. If you, if you stop, but yes, so there, um, and then so but the project, so. The estimate that we have for option one uh, for permitting and construction is $636,570. And then for option two, uh, the high end is $508,570. How, how uh, recent are those estimates? I Especially think we got the estimate. Well, they revised it to include option two like a month ago. Within a month, yeah. So they looked at the option one, two, and yes. brought it up. Yes. Pretty, yeah. pretty recent. Yes. Yes. No, this is in-house, yeah. definitely. Because they're on, on preliminary design right now, so they wouldn't have gone out for that. So I just wanted to see. Well, they do. I mean, they work for every, they have the contracts everywhere. So I'm sure they have a good sense of what the market is, but I do not expect that they did a great deal of work getting these estimates. Um, I have one, one quick okay, question before yeah. you go about just to get clear on option two, where it says keep the existing docking utilities in the same location. So what's the, I guess I need to know what the do, what's considered the dock because you're talking uh, about moving the floats out. Yeah, so the dock is um, where it is in the okay. fixed location. Top um, of the hill? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's yep. the dock. Okay. Yep, that's the dock is the fixed uh, pier that's there. Yep. And then the ramp would be replaced with a longer ramp. Right, because and, the floats would be moved out. Yeah, because the floats would be moved out. And then the the float that it lands on would be slightly bigger. Right. Um, so they would have to go to Chapter 91 to, to increase the size of the square footage that we have. But So it's going to take a while. Permitting would probably take uh they at this point they had our timeline um for the spring of 2026 um but it's looking more like it's going to be 2027 because of the permitting we have to go to army corps we have to go to chapter 91 um conservation commission natural heritage did, did we have and this is this is exactly what we did not do in 2018 19 when we went out to bid the first time because we the docks were in such horrible condition and we were getting such pressure from people to replace them for that current year that we did it without permitting the opening up and reconfiguring the permit so we were able to do a shorter permitting because we were just keeping exactly the square footage that we had, which is exactly why we ended up with the short landing pad and, and the steeper pitch. Just so you know, that, that was the original. What kicks in the uh, permitting aspect? Is it the configuration of the dock or is it? Pilings or both? Well, if we, like we did in 2019, if we keep it exactly the way it is, then we don't have to open up. We don't have to go through two levels of permitting that we would have to do if we touch it in any way. But if we're going to push it out anyway, we have to touch it. So we're in that permitting. Uh, a question. Um, uh, in option one, it's 80 feet long. Option two, it says not 80 feet, but do we have a sense of what option two would be? Well, it's going to extend out. They said the, the docks would push into the harbor uh, 10 to 20 feet. They really haven't done much uh, because we paid them to look at the ADA option. They haven't put much effort into the second option. Um, so 10 to 20 feet longer than it is now at this point. Okay. Yeah. Existing ramp. Yeah, which yeah. I think is 
25, 30 yeah. feet, maybe. Have they so discussed what would, what would options um, uh, one or two do to that angle? I'm just curious, you know, how much reduced is that steepness for either one of those? Both, both of them would reduce the steepness. Right, but and one would be, I'm assuming one would be more because you'd have a longer glide path, right? But how much more? Um, at that angle, looks almost like what, 40, 30, 40 degrees. But what what would it be if it goes out for one or if it goes out for two? What would it be reduced to in terms of the steepness? I don't know the the percent angle that would change. Um, I do, because the engineers haven't really looked at that, and but okay. it would. I'm sure it would change. Well, the, it'd I be think more they comfortable would, going. My down. understanding is that they would pick the size ramp that would fix the pitch, but it wouldn't be handicapped accessible. Right. So the 80 foot ramp was the ridiculous accommodation we had to make right. to, and that, so, so why I, one of the reasons why we're here is I think number option, number one, that 80 foot ramp weighs, I don't know how much, but it requires us to build a hoist system that sits there all year long. And yep. so that was the part of option one that I did not prefer that I know citizens won't prefer because it's right. going to, yeah. Plus, yeah. Um, so I think option two does help us get the ramp fixed, that pitch fixed. And right. it also pushes, if we get to reconfigure and push the floats out, the harbor master actually thinks that we may be able to fit a couple of extra slips in that. Now that would probably be true with one or two, but we can still do that with two. Okay. Okay. Steve, that's actually a good question. I'm not so sure that the pitch would be affected all that much by going five to 10 feet or 15 feet out. Yeah. It's, it's very steep now and extending the bottom out. It doesn't 15 feet. Is I didn't do the math on it, few, but it does not degrees. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. If you, but you we're doing two things. We're pushing the bot, the, the landing float out. Right. And we're making the um, ramp longer. Right. You're connecting the dust, but the, but the dock stays at the same elevation. It's existing. Yeah. Right. Does it yeah, probably? They, I asked them about the, that. They were thinking it probably needs to stay where it is because as it gets, as the angle decreases, it, it may be touching salt marsh grass. So they thought they needed that separation for like DMF permitting or some, one of the permitting agencies. Oh, you mean? The, it would get lower if we cut off the existing dock. Oh, yeah. And they figured, they said they're going to leave the dock, uh, existing dock in, in same location. So yeah. they, they figured that in their estimate leaving it alone yes so that just means yes, someone say that the bottom of the triangle gets extended by 15 feet it just seems like it's it's not going to change that angle too much well so it, it seems like we're trying to solve two problems the flotation of the dock itself as well as that steepness right and i'm not convinced the steepness would be significant right but the other question is is there other options like 2a where you don't do the entire dock but you do half the dock that's actually getting caught up on the sand at this point <clears throat> or do you have to do the whole thing i'm sure i don't know if there was another option i would have thought they would have thrown it out for us but i want to give before we get too much into discussion i want to give paul a chance to say his piece yeah. I was the one that wrote to the Handicap Access Board. It took three years to get the ruling. We do not have to meet ADA compliance. That does that. What that means, we do not have to have an 80 foot long ramp, six feet wide. All right. These were some of the original plans. What the main crux of the problem that I would like to tell you is. When the taxpayers was given this proposal, it was done by one engineering company. After the money got approved, the $1.4 million, we hired a different engineering company. 
So that is one of the big problems because now we get this other guy and here's one of his designs, steps and coming down for the Southern Docks. That isn't what got built. That's not what's out there, okay? At the acceptance meeting, I was there. The head selectman was there. And I'm gonna tell you, the worst thing is, there's no oversight in any of these construction projects. I got a copy of all the records. There was never a project diary. We have some people there that didn't even put in certified payrolls. So I don't know if you wanna really go back over this or you wanna no. I'm not going to talk for an hour. Talk for an hour. So, in the original plans, this was the first engineer that we bid on. If you look here, he has an alternative dock right by the courtesy dock. See these little designations? This is your high bank. This is, doesn't fall into the criteria of the bank. This is a much lower elevation, a shorter distance to get out onto our docks. I have shown this to other people. That would cut the cost down drastically. So what are you proposing to redo that? As I've said from from very beginning, and you know, I never was thought it was a good idea to put the ramp up at the top of the hill. It was stupid. Well, when we had a, the, have you, the, issue, the issue is no, no. and that Jeff Oaks designed, Bach said we cannot permit that way. Am I that's because of the separation, you have to have a specific distance from the ground for permitting for if it's salt marsh grass or beach grass in order for it to it's not so i actually sent you the paperwork the grass that's there is an invasive species and it says it should be removed because it damages the bank nobody has gone to the due diligence to go through this to find out can we put it there the state went in and put in the drainage system there, and they removed the grass and conservation let them move it. We're gonna be about eight feet away from where the drainage line is. Second, okay. all right, that, that's one Please option. Leave that, leave that option, because that is not a real option. Okay. okay. Now I've had the harbor master down with me and I've had John down. When I proposed and I drew up pictures and I brought them up to your office, what we can do with the existing platform is go back to the third set of, of piles, cut it off there, make the same attachment and run the ramp. John was there when I had my 200 foot tape, showed you the difference at the angle. Right now, the ramp is at a 31 degree angle. At, at what tide? Low tide? At low tide. Because basically your ramp is a high, the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Right. You get a set elevation, and then the other elevation is what the platform is. So if you looked at this section here, he actually had steps going down, lowering it down. We didn't have any of that. It didn't get built that way. I heard you the first time. So as she said, which is true, conservation does have a problem with the grass. I had five staples put my head walking underneath. We got over, over five feet of elevation above the grass. The grass only grows two or three feet high. There's no reason we can't step that platform down. I, I think we respectfully disagree, but until we go to conservation, we couldn't. Well, so. What you're suggesting? Do the go back to the third set of tiles. Mm -hmm. I asked both about that. I asked them the first time when they were doing the feasibility study. I they didn't look at that option. Um, when I asked them to, 
for whatever reason. This time I asked them as we were trying to evaluate this as a second option. Um, and that is what I mentioned earlier is that they expressed concerns about separation um, and the, lo the, the lowering of the elevation of the ramp at low tide. Um, I, I met with Foss since junior engineer when they were doing the borings down there because they were doing borings beside my boat. He took pictures of it and he said, I think this would be an excellent idea. Then I took him down to the end. I don't know if anybody's talked to the state, but you're talking about moving our docks out. You were going to absolutely take out any access into the courtesy dock. Our state boat two years ago had the lower unit knocked off with boats trying to get to the courtesy dock because it's the, the boats that we have is farther out than the courtesy dock. By moving it out even farther, boats don't take a right degree triangle turn to get into the courtesy dock. So I don't think you have, and my whole thing is, when we did the first bore uh, dredging, how many years ago was that, 10 or 12? Our docks floated. We did this dredging and our docks went right back sitting on the bottom. Did the Army Corps of Engineers make us a new dredge line? I didn't see anything staking out of the dredging. Did they really go? My question is, I don't think they even went back far enough on the dredging, the last dredging. We have as built plans from FOSS Engineering um, on the dredging, and they're required to stay 25 feet from the edge of the salt marsh. So if it if it crept further seaward, maybe that's why. Um, but it, they have it, the dredging it, line they, on all of their sites. Go back to the original where it used to be. They go from where it is currently. They have to survey every time where the salt marsh grass is, and um, you know we could we could look at the um, option of cutting it back and ask Foth to look at that. When you but look at I the think... item for dredging, dredging says you go to the line that under state code, the, all these dredging operations were done under the state blue book. I was an engineer for 30 years with the state running contracts. Then it says afterwards, you had to have a three to one slope. And nobody can say you can't do that. They didn't slope it. You've got to look up the item in the state blue book on dredging and how dredging is done properly. Just because it says go to here, you still can go farther back to bring the proper reveal down on the slope. It has never been done properly on either dredging projects. That's why I say we've got to have oversight. You got to have somebody out there watching. We should have better record keeping of what's going on because $500,000, I mean, we've never brought it. If you look at the original contract that we voted on, it said we were going to get a parking lot. That was not a contract. I know it wasn't. That was a proposal that the taxpayers voted on. And because it didn't, and the warrant didn't get listed item by item, you were given $1.4 million and then 1.3. 1 1.3? I thought it was 1.4. And there we went. And we have $700,000 left to do a parking lot. If that's what we want to do, we can still but do if, that. But if, if you hand the taxpayers, and this is what we want, and it shows a parking space, aren't you obligated to do what you said you were going to do and not just take the money and do what you want? Well, we didn't propose putting the docks further into the harbor as part of this project either when we went to the taxpayers for $1.3 million. Dollars. I... But we're, you know, Foth Engineering has done the dredging design they were CLE engineering when they did the dredging back in 2014. They're designing the bulkhead and they're working with the town of Orleans and how to configure that. So we're trusting them as engineers that really know this harbor to make something that's navigable. And we've been working with the harbor master as well, and he hasn't brought anything up. And we've been talking to the state about this project. So um, I think- You've talked to the state about moving the docks farther out into the water? Yes. yes. And they said they had no problem with it? Because we told them that if we can't connect to the courtesy dock, 
this is our other option. We would love it if we could, you know, easily connect to the courtesy doc so we don't have to do this project. But this is the other option that we have to move forward if we're going to lessen the angle of the of the floats and the ramp. So um, this we can ask them about cutting the dock back. I don't know that they'll be able to do that. Um, but otherwise, these are the two options that they gave us as engineers when we had them do a feasibility study and what are our options for this area of the harbor. And they've done two feasibility studies. So it's not like they haven't been looking at this for 10 years now. No, no six. They they were responsible for the 2014 dredge beginning of that too. So 10. 2014 to 2020. So in terms of the angle, um the third the third um set of pilings, that's obviously not in the picture, right? So how far back is that? Is that the same distance as the two that are in the picture? That's yeah, if you look at the uh, plan C one gotcha. hundred one, it's like this is this red. is the original that we we paid full price. Matching. They didn't on even it. what the first engineering company and the project. This is the way it looked that we accepted. Mm -hmm. And the whole problem was. Okay, I see. I see C one hundred and one. I guess that shows three pilings, right? There's like a bit of a. There's three. Yeah, here. there's few. There's a couple of sets of them um, along the shoreline there, That's along where the dock is. You can see the small, each set of pilings for that right. dock. Okay. Hmm. But you can see under the first dredging. These docks floated. The second dredging, as soon as they went back in, they went high and dry. And the floats are designed to rest on the bottom. Right. Correct. Are, are designed or are not designed? Are, are not, not designed. designed. So this was the problem with the first one with the engineer. This ramp was falling off into the water, so we allowed him just to stack his cab a piece on and then put this plate out to hang over. Mm -hmm. And we paid full price. So I guess just kind of going back to summarize, we um we had the 1.3 million approved in 2018. We replaced the docks. We replaced the floats. We've dredged the harbor. We've done emergency dredging. So we spent quite a bit of money and we just want to get the opinion and thoughts of the Capital Projects Committee to see if spending the additional six, probably by the time we actually go to do it, it'll be more, the, the price will increase. But hmm. if we should continue moving forward, spending this funding on moving the floats into the harbor and decreasing the angle of the float at low tide. So this is not an issue at high tide when most uh, boaters and users of these 12 slips are using their boats to get in and out of the harbor. And we went down, Steve and I went down at low tide today just to check it out. And that was my first impression though. Who comes down here at low tide? And I do. Those boat owners. Yeah. It wasn't a big crowd. There's one car in the parking. But so it's the boat owners. So then, well, nobody else can go down there unless you're a boat owner, right? Well, and to be fair, Paul, we haven't had complaints from the other 11 slip owners or slip. Oh, they decided to let me do the speaking. I mean, the guy with the sailboat right beside the courtesy dock last year, he got hit four times. That's why he's got a bunch of uh buoys there. So, but he's happy he's got a slip. So moving it out is going to compound it even more. Help him. It is. It's also not going to help. Right. Which is the third option. Just leave it where it is. Which is the no no cost option. Right. Uh, my only question is, if the Army Corps of Engineers gave us permission for a dredge line ten years ago. 
Why did Font decide to move it farther in? I believe the answer to that question is that the bank has grown out in that 10 year period. And mm. so we have to go with a new measure. Other than Font, who told them they had to go by a new measure? Was it Font themselves? Did the uh, what I was told before by the other what I was told by the other town administrator, Sheila Vanderhoff, because I questioned the first dredging limits, and she said we put the contract out before the Army Corps of Engineers gave us our dredge line. So I was under the impression the only one that can give out the dredge line is the Army Corps of Engineers, not an engineering company. Right, but the permit is, the permit that the Army Corps issues is what tells the dredge company what they can and can't dredge. So my question is, going back to 2022, do we have a new issue from the Army Corps of Engineers? There's so the, the the limit of dredging is where the limit of dredging is. If we dredge into areas we haven't dredged before, that's improvement dredging, not maintenance dredging. We It may change a little bit where the south docks is because we have to maintain 25 feet from the edge of salt marsh vegetation. So yeah. that is an Army Corps of Engineers requirement. That's why it moved out. A little Obviously, bit. Obviously, they don't reissue a permit. So exactly, they issue you a requirement to survey each time you go to dredge. Yes. I'll I'll be down there with my tape measure tomorrow, and we'll see where twenty five feet goes. What? That's excellent. That's fine. I mean, I think you know if you if you think they're wrong, then we should. Orleans managed the second dredge project, so... I, yeah, and I don't think they looked at anything that went on on the East Ham side. I never saw any bean poles or anything staked in to give the excavator where he should be, his limits that he should be going. So I'm not clear, and I want to be clear this time because we've been through this quite a few times together. Oh, yeah. Are been... you saying that we shouldn't do anything? We shouldn't do one, we shouldn't do two, and we shouldn't do three. We should come up with four. I'm saying one with the 80 foot long ramp, it's way too much money. Two, by the time we don't have the parking lot to walk all the way over there, walk down an 80 foot ramp that's going to go at the other end of the dock, and I got to turn around and walk all the way back on the dock. And you don't need an eight foot wide ramp. But the ramp we got now is only like 31 inches. And if you're going to have commercial people there, because obviously the courtesy dock, the ramp, and the parking lot are owned by the state, and it's only for recreational use. Commercial boats can't tie up to the courtesy dock. So they have to offload and everything on the all in side. And there's no way, if you saw that ramp, there's no way anybody's going to be able to bring it, carry anything up and down that ramp. That boat tie. Even quarter tie, I can't walk down there carrying a fishing pole and in a cooler because I have to hold on. So, what are you're, you're touching up a lot of a lot of different points? If the dredge was done to what you would like to see, it's not going to fix the problem of the angle of the ramp, but it's going to save the docks from being deteriorated because it's only a plastic bottom sitting on there. It should be a skid plate underneath to protect the bottom of the, of, of the docks. So what is option four? I still say, I don't, I don't see why. If that area beside where the drainage outlet is for the state is not the high bank <laughs> and the vegetation there, if you look it up, it will tell you it's an invasive species in the recommendation and exactly what the state did, they removed it. And they put all trapstone down there. So would it be 
if if I agree to talk to the conservation agent and check out this theory, would that be acceptable? As a yes. taxpayer, I th I think you know for eighteen votes to spend another half a million dollars is. And you know what I said from the very beginning, leave leave the private people alone there. Okay, so we can choose option three? No, because the ramp's totally unacceptable. I had a selectman down there. Both technically so, both so, ramps are me, unacceptable. Um, so are we, um, so it sounds like, because I don't have a boat and I have, should have walked around there a bit more. Um Jackie, if you went and got sign off about the the biology of the plants, um, then are we saying there is an option four, which is to move the dock back and lower it from that angle rather than push the fl the floating part out? So, so Steve, that's all. We so have I'm been, just trying to figure yeah. out. No, I are know. You? We've been told by our professional engineering firm. Mm that we cannot do that option. We, Shana and I have discussed that option with okay. them. Paul made a drawing of that option. I loved that option, right. okay? It was cheaper, it was lower, it was, you know, it makes perfect sense. Right. Unfortunately, they said, no, it'll never be permitted. So what I'm saying to Paul is, I mean, I'm willing to explore it again, but right, I am right. not an engineer. I'm not a yeah. specialist in coastal engineering. And these people are, and they're very well renowned. It's not right. like we've chosen a, you know, a local right. yokel. And nor are we experts in 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 the vegetation either, right? So Correct. it seems like the first thing you'd have to find out is if what we're hearing here is correct, that you can rip all that out. Then you go further and think about what you thought you could do in the first place, but we're not going to be able to do because of the vegetation. So if the vegetation ceases to be a barrier, then you figure out how to solve the ramp uh, steepness by going further inland rather than pushing the floats out. I'm just saying, I understand what you're saying, what you were told, but maybe it's worth in terms of spend that you hold off on spending. You find out about the vegetation. Yes, that's true. You can take that out. We don't care. Oh, okay. Then we have a fourth option. Right. So that's what I just asked him. If we if we do that, however, I, I'm I'm we have been looking at this now for many years. Paul right. is absolutely right, and there is no easy solution. So that's the issue, and and I I I might urge you to go back and look at what we went through to try and get the Harbor Master Building permitted because we right. had four meetings with the CONSCOM and we had a Butters uh, getting on the line and we learned a lot of things. Like for instance, Rock Harbor, that harbor is also a river and there are different oh, rules other about regulations on the rivers. River. <laughs> and so, I mean, it was just really difficult to get them to even consider one little piece of marsh grass and how high in the air did we have to right. put that building? So I am a, a bit jaded because we've been going through this yeah. for a while, but I'm definitely willing to talk to Alex and Hillary and see if they'll take a look at it and give me an opinion. Right. Because that doesn't cost anything, right? So, or minimum. Right. So because given the, given the spend that we're potentially asked to vote on, it seems like, it takes a couple of weeks to get an answer there rather than trying to do something that might have an issue with people trying to get into their slips. Because the first thing I said, somebody sent Kayla a message back. I said, what's the low tie angle on that thing? Because just like I've heard from the speaker who I didn't catch his name, um, wow. I could never walk down that, that ramp carrying anything. So clearly there has to be a remediation. It's just a question of from which direction so if you find out that, okay, those plants, take them out, then you go to option four and figure out what that's going to cost, and then you have to vote on it again. But maybe that's the better way to do it than doing this. Well, okay, so a couple of things. I understand that that pitch at dead low tide is horrible. 
Mm. I just don't understand why anyone needs to go to their boat at dead low tide when there are other options. You know, I, I, I and I don't think honestly <laughs> to spend $600,000 so that you can carry a cooler at dead low tide down to a boat that you can't move for another how many hours doesn't seem reasonable to me. Both of your ramps are out of compliance because the arms don't come back so you can actually fall off the sides. Now, the other thing is, I know you say you fought and this and that. I really question their abilities because they are doing the design on the all in side. And this is something else I think people ought to think about. If you were down there, Peter, did you see the size of the dragger boats that are tied up over on sure, the bulkhead? Sure. So what I've understood is on the all inside, they're going back 20 feet. The, the bulkhead? The bulkhead's going back 20 In, feet. Inland, yeah. And then they're putting a five-foot walkway. Down, like, down like the charter boats on the water. On the other side, yeah. And now these boats are going to back in. They're not going to parallel. I was wondering, yeah. They are going to be so far out in the middle of the channel, right. for right. them to actually get in, they're going to be almost coming over touching our boats. No. Well, yeah. As they are now? No, 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 because they're rafted up beside. They're, they're two rafted together now, but they'll be back. I mean, and obviously, if, the two sides have to be coordinated. You can't, we can't not do something. We're coordinating with all these. That's, my, that's what my whole thing is. So you got we have the same them. engineer. How can yeah. that not be coordinated? The same engineer. Yeah, but just look at it. If we're going to push our docks out, one of your proposals is, I heard, 10 or 20 feet. And they're going to be putting 50, 60-foot boats coming out toward us. When it's time for the boats to come in and out, when the parking lot is filled with the recreational people and everybody else, it is an absolute mess down here. No doubt about it. There are option five. Exactly. So it seems like we're going to eliminate the whole harbor. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying not to be sarcastic, yeah. but option five would be abandon the south docks mm -hmm. rather than have all this trouble and expense for 12 boats. Give us back to the slip holders and we'll take care of it. So we've been talking about this. You, you've been at the table and we've been talking about it for 30 minutes. So what I'm suggesting is I he'll Shana and I are going to chat with Alex and Hillary, and we're going to take that picture, which I know we still have of where you drew it, because it, it did make a lot Can of I sense. Ask about that one. Yeah. Just so that I'm yeah. clear. Are you talking about relocating the existing dock? Close, just closer to the ramp, towards the ramp. All you're going to do is Go back to the third set of pilings. I get the third set of pilings. Oh, yeah. no, that wasn't what I was going to talk and then, to them about. And then drop that section? No, down. you could leave it that way because now oh, start you're, back you're here. elongating okay. it. So now the ramp, I can bring down. What I did with John, and he was there, I had a 200-foot tape. So I held it at, at the third piling back and went all the way down at low tide. Yeah. On, and I said, that would be an acceptable slope. And the harbor master said, yes. I said, all you're going to do is just disconnect it. Look, the yeah. town could do it. Right. And cut the pilings off. Don't pull the pilings. So the only thing that would be closer to the marsh and grass would be the ramp? It would be the ramp. Right. That's what so they were concerned about. That's what they're concerned about. <laughs> yeah. Because you have to have a separation between. I mean, common the... sense. Engineering companies make money the bigger the project is. That's true, but conservation is conservation. And we have all these rules, Paul, that, you know, I I'm sorry, but we have to abide by. So whether we think they're ridiculous or not, they exist and we have to, you know, permit around them. This is why, I mean, half of the $229,000 of this money is just the permitting and design phase. Half. And literally half. I wish I had my other pictures. I think you probably go. And if it's I going back, any, any grass underneath that part that I'm talking about. Well, let me check that piece out, and yep. then well, we will that, come back. It still wouldn't um, solve the problem of the decks on the on the sand at low tide. Uh huh. It still wouldn't solve no, the problem of the no. of the, right. of the uh, right. uh, But 
How about it needs to be when we pull the when we pull the docks out, they're going to be tipped over and modified and on the bottom. That's what I was going to ask. It doesn't sound like a, a expensive fix. And Except we can replace all of them for three hundred ninety-two thousand. So it's like we could replace them twice for the cost mm -hmm. of doing, doing this. this. I'm doing this. Yeah, yeah. Skids on the bottom. I don't know. I, don't know. I would say if that option works, we're still going to have to increase the size of that because. Of the ramp. The ramp is going to be larger. Yeah. So we're still going to have to probably have a lifting mechanism yep. for the new ramp. Because really? that's going to be, what, 30 feet? Yeah, they were talking about installing additional pilings as they were, if they're going to do option two, they would install pilings for that Oh, an extra ramp. set of pilings. I saw that, yeah. Yeah, so this would definitely probably require a hoist of some kind based on an additional length. But it sounds like because we're talking about all these different options, they're not within this contract that we like our contract right now is for FOF to look to permit this ADA mm -hmm. project. So it sounds like we're almost going to the feasibility route to see what are the options and how much does that change the angle and can we do this and is that permittable? So it sounds almost Which like is in your packet. We did it in 2020 and they identified the options. So you know, that's what we are going with is those options. And the permitting fees are the same no matter what we do, it sounds like. They're well, the same for one and two. They're actually. not if you if you don't open up the, they're the same for oh, one and two. Uh, but three. If would... we didn't have to reconfigure to do what, but I think we probably would to, to do the other options too. Maybe not the one that cuts the pilings off, but the other option that moves the whole. You know, if really spitball in here, but if you went back to the third the third pilings and put the and got rid of that section of dock, then you still would have the, the two existing the fourth pilings there. Maybe they could be support used to raise the dock the ramp, I don't know. Instead the of, engineers say no. no. We I, asked them, but we can we can you've been you've already been through the, Yeah, we asked we drew drew a picture and had a meeting with them about it and said we you know this is all we want to do. We just want to cut the want to make the dock shorter and install a longer ramp. And they oh, said you've been you've been down. So yes. Yeah. I'm just picking it up for the first time. All you would have to do is put a pole, drill through the piling on the outside, have an arm to go out, have an electric motor. And winch it back up. We got the power there and everything. It's not that easy. It's so is that the option that you would like us to explore again? The option I would like is to see a ramp in there for next year. I think by going back three, I think it's just a matter of conservation saying yes or no. And I don't see how they can say no if there's no grass underneath there. And the thing is, but the we ramp definitely we got, ramp we got here now is a solid ramp, and I think most of it's steel or galvy. It was aluminum. Aluminum. Was it? Yeah. I it's aluminum. I didn't. I, know, look, I didn't look closely at it. But, but now, when you buy a, a ramp that's open graded, it's going to be a lot less. It's going to it's going lighter. to be longer, but it might be closer to the same amount of weight because we don't know what the weights are of any of the ramps. We'll explore that again, Paul. I don't I don't know what else to say. But please talk with them about all names. And I think that's gonna take totally out the option of, of moving ours out. Because okay. if we we're if it does turn into all commercial and you're allowing up to 32 foot boats, I know the state wouldn't let us put a 32 foot boat where the sailboat is because they were concerned about the courtesy dock. Right. So as much as well, I what I didn't like about moving them out is the cost yes. for for you know a limited number of of boats and taxpayers. 18, yeah, you know it's hard to justify with all the other costs we have in town for projects. So if we could figure out a way to mm -hmm. make it better and not spend a lot of money, that'd be great. 
It's yeah. terrific. And we've been at yep. it now for about seven years. We've been asking. Yeah, we asked, yeah. we we wrote to the secretary of the executive office of energy and environmental affairs. We Three met times. with them. They said, no, we wrote them letters. No, to connect to the courtesy dock. To connect over there. Which was a cheaper option because right. the first option was, can we cut the docks back? We heard no. Well, can you do a feasibility study and see if you could cut the dock back and extend the ramp? No, that's not the option. These are your options. And so, but we could ask again. I mean, you know, and. Yeah, that's one, one last question about the comment you made about turn them back to the slip holders. What, what was the different ownership? That, that's not a possibility. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's the history? The history was they weren't supposed to be there. <laughs> and the boat owners got together and built a dock. Right. And right. then when I came that. along in 2018, you know, it was it was like a muddy slide down the hill to the dock. I mean, you talk about danger. I, mean, I, I don't even want to go there because it's just too long. But anyway, we took over the docks and we replaced them all and we did this and we probably shouldn't have like that would have been the time to just you know Abandoned. get rid of yeah. them well, but fair. that's not what town meeting voted so we have proceeded ahead for well, your phase two which i hope never comes to tuition at rock harbor this phase two call for putting a stone jenny all around and we are not proceeding with phase two we haven't even been able to do phase one. All right, we're going to wrap up Rock Harbor and we're going to reconvene at some point once we get a couple of answers. What's the latest yep. answer, Shed? It's absolutely a no go. So the Capital Projects Committee voted to um, not rebid or redesign that and we have abandoned we chose option four we're abandoning it uh, so the two that are there which one is ours um ours is the one that's the rat infested little shack close to the I north docks that. north that's ours the other one they right. want to give to us but it's the, east demo, the other one the one by the ramp is it good? the one um, by the ramp is the coast guard auxiliary yeah it's the coast guard but it, that one looks like it's about ready to fall into that. Right. And one of the things we talked about with the Harbor Master is, you know, could we do some kind of platform there, like a deck platform with a sunshade so that at least, yeah. you know, someone would be able to stand out there near the ramp. And so we have talked about that. Um, but though they both need to be demolished. No plan to demolish, though, at this point. Well, we talked about it. But, you know, we don't again, how much money do we have and what are we going to spend it on? Like, you know, Paul talked about the parking. Well, we could, one of the things that the select board and the CPC talked about after the building is, do we do some of the site improvements without building a building? Like, do we do the extra parking that we were going to do? And do we do the walkways and the drainage improvements? Um, and all of those things, because they were in the, they were in the building plan okay but we have enough money to do some of those if we wanted to. Um, so it's been kind of on hold, except for this FOTH contract to move ahead with this thing that uh, we've now discovered Paul doesn't even want. So. Target. Yeah. John, do you have anything? You... No, I... I... I don't think so. I mean, again, if we explore that option with moving that back, we do have to look at the whole lifting mechanism again, and it's just yeah. not, it's not. And that's serious. the barrier. It's like they're so heavy. And and I agree with Paul. I mean, technology is changing all the time. There may be a lighter, you know, ramp that we can explore too. I don't know. but. And if we do change the size of the float at all to accommodate that, extra ramp that ramp getting further landward um or if we do have to install any additional pilings it's going to open up our chapter 91 license so the permitting won't be fast it won't be like we can do it for this spring yeah. unless we do it secretly so. thank you very much Shana. Right. thank you um
So I think, you know, this is just a, a minor microcosm of sort of what we've been struggling with. I mean, I think uh, to go back to 2018, this was a long discussion. It was about a 25 minute discussion on town meeting floor, which if you know our town meetings, that's a considerable amount of talking. And um, it did not, it it got a two thirds majority, but but not, it. you know, 80 some odd people voted against it too. So I think it's, it's always been a question of, you know, th this harbor is basically for 48 users. And what the select board was trying to do by moving this Rock Harbor Improvement Project forward was to open the Rock Harbor Marina up to citizens so that they could come and walk, so that they could come and park and watch boats come in and out, so that they could enjoy the fruits that they were paying for in some ways. And so that's what brought us down this path. Right. But I do agree in, in talking with Rich and talking with Shana and talking with our team, the Harbor Master would still love us to, you know, move, do number one and move everything out and do all of that because, you know, it, it's an improvement, right? But we have so many other priorities since 2018 when this passed. And I think that's what you know, we have to start making some choices because people are saying, you know, we don't want our tax rate to go up. We know we have some big things on the horizon. And so we have to start making some choices. And so that's where I thought there's no good. The truth is there's no good solution to this problem. We haven't or we haven't found it in all of these years. I think you just hit the key point. Which is, um, you know, what are we going to get the bang for the buck for? Are we spending a million three for you know a handful of boat users, or can we take that million three to improve the property for the broader community to enjoy the site? Mm -hmm. And you still got the boat ramp. It's not like the people don't have access to the water. So um, now I guess it's kind of how I look at it. Is what's the best bang for the buck? And if we can't do twelve docks because it's not feasible or practical or legal or whatever the case may be, then sorry. But is there a liability at this point if we don't do anything? No, no more than we have now. It's not dangerous because you don't have to go down that ramp. I mean, that's the biggest point of all. Does our Chapter 91 license require us to keep it open all times? No. I mean, it's not just open to the public. The ramps. Yeah. And yeah the so floats are and ramps are open to the public. So they're, they're closed at... Yeah. Two hours, an hour before low tide or something. I don't know. You know, wouldn't be bad because people got, could see somebody wandering down there, a uh, tourist. Or... Oh, it's just a sign you'd have to put up. Well, first of all, you have to find the harbor. Yeah. <laughs> I just had to give Kayla directions. <laughs> I did walk down the dock. And she did walk up and down the dock in the sandals that she's wearing. Yeah. When that wet spot's a little dicey, though, where the, where the water was leaking off there, that's a little dicey. Yeah. See that? Yeah. Be my age. One of our select board members, Bob Bruns, also did challenge Paul because he uses that dock regularly and oh. is able to navigate it. Last one last question on, on one of these sheets. This one it shows a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar construction grant award. Is that yes. yeah. are we do we have any grants that they're committed to do something with? That grant was given to us for the building, which gave a, our budget, which increased our budget to 1.5 million for the building. And then when the low bid came in at 2.4 and change, um, we had to give the grant back. Yeah. yeah, we asked them if we could use some of it to do some of the improvements down there instead. Right. And they said, they said, no, no it's you just can for the building. find some other grant to fund that part of the project. Rich, what happens to the money? If option three was chosen, do nothing. Option three doing nothing. We get uh, it stays there. Uh, town meeting can reappropriate it for it was a bonded project, so we'd have to reappropriate for a like project, and, and that term means a similar time frame. So I think that was a twenty year, or was it a ten year bond? No, no the dredging is ten, but I think the I think this was a twenty. Was a twenty. So any other project that uh, provides for bonding of twenty years, we could redirect it towards that. And okay. top, a town meeting has to. Yes. yes. Do it. Okay. So it would be part of a funding plan right. for 
some other project. So, you know, in another month or so on the finance committee, we're going to go through the capital plan. Yep. Anything in there? You know, Shane has been <laughs> pegging, um, read, um, what do you call it? Stormwater and other improvements at different town landings. Yep. That's probably a, a like project. Similar, yeah. yeah. And un unlike Rock Harbor, I mean, the landings are overused right now. They're undersized, overused, and we really need to, to address those because they're danger spots too. They're regulatory hell, but they're also, you know, there's just too many different types of users going in and out those roads, down those ramps into those small parking lots, so... It's not easy. It really isn't. This is not, I'm not suggesting to you guys that this is an easy decision to make because it, it just isn't, you know, and if we hadn't, you know, gone through so many iterations to try and find a way, um, I would be more encouraging. But I, I, however, at this point, I, I feel like we're, you know, it's, it's, I'll check out these other things again, but it's really, it's kind of like number two or nothing. I mean, you're looking at $60,000, $65,000 per slip. Per, per slip. But figuring 12 slips? Because he said 18. It is 12. It's 12 slips. And only one commercial right now. Well, because you had that $200,000 back in, you're not talking. Yeah, and, and I think if you. dollars you're talking seven sixty nine. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money per slip. Yeah. Yep. Twelve people. And if you factor in the emergency dredging and the maintenance dredging we just completed, and the floats that we replaced, and the pilings that were just replaced, and the electrical and the water are both new, um, it's a substantial that we've amount of money that we've already allocated to the harbor in the last five years. So the land, other landings along the marsh, Hemingway. And Collins and Salt Pond, we haven't allocated any funding to them. We got grant funding, um, and we have it in the capital plan to allocate some additional funding, hopefully in the future, to construct and improve the stormwater there. But um, maybe that's another use that could help to benefit our landings. It's similar, like Rich was yeah. saying. Yeah, it's a it's a conundrum. I think the improvements you did in 2018 were significant. Yes. And significant enough to where this this ramp is the only issue. And back then the issues that they were way worse than what this someone ramp. fell through the dock. On, on the north dock? Yeah. Oh the I'm sorry, the float. Was it the float they mm -hmm. fell through? Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> I would put the money where you know you could really see a significant change. That's my feeling. I agree. Okay, so let's close for now. We'll wait and the Fred way. talk. have Fred weigh in. Because, um, there's, again, there's no rush. We're talking about spring of 2026, whichever, or fall, because of the time of year restrictions. We can only do work at certain times of the year that down there, so... Um, it's not an emergency. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your patience, too. I know. Finance committee related question. So these from the Rock Harbor. Bonds, Thank you. Thank you. But they only total. Thank you. A little over one million. What's the balance? Oh, that's, okay. that's the answer. So you want to do the town hall budget close out briefly, and then if we have any questions on that. Did did you get that? Did I? No. No, did not get that. Did you send it to Steve? Thank you.
Oh, it's uh, Steve. It should be the last page in the packet that that Kayla emailed you. Second package email just today. Yes. Okay. It's just a one page. We're looking at the funding sources, what we spent the money on. Is other landscaping? Did she put landscaping into other? <laughs> Okay. I think it's in other. No. So what we did is we took the CP the two CPA articles. We also had a capital article. Is the capital article from the town hall maintenance and yeah, okay. Oh, okay. There wasn't too much of it. Most of the landscaping, like the grass and all of that was in the BSI. That was our contractor. So the BSI original amount, a little over a million dollars, that included um, grass and walkways and Add up the totals under the contractors and the architect. Do they stay within the appropriation, or are they over? Or... They stayed within the appropriation only because we increased that capital line. So technically, this this project was over time and over budget. You know, to be perfectly honest with you, but we used some maintenance articles that we had in capital to fund it because it it made sense because it it was redoing some things that could be considered routine maintenance that were actually not done. I guess the other way to look at it maybe would be perhaps to say the budget really was the two CPA articles. Yeah. And all the extra fell to this capital article. So you guys being on the finance committee, you know, when you look at that capital plan, we have recurring articles for each facility, right? Every year we put money in for town hall, for the fire department, for the police department. So that money we've been accumulating for town hall was used, utilized for, for this project. How's the closeout working out as far as retaining it? work remaining as far as um I think we're done didn't we pay that we paid BSI's last bill yep completed. yep okay. so this is it this is the closeout one one million four hundred and nine thousand one seventy eight oh two okay. so yeah we're roughly four hundred thousand dollars over budget and it could have been worse we eliminated a lot of things to <laughs> to get to that it's done Mm -hmm. yeah. Ironically, the second lowest bill, bid for contracting was 1.4 and change. Mm -hmm. Reassuring a little bit. What, uh, um, how, how did it end up working out with the masonry contractor? Did they get Good. BSI, yeah, BSI, um, we had to pay, I want to say, they were asking for $30,000 more to complete it. And I think BSI took it on and we paid 10,000 extra to BSI, but they took over and they did a really nice job to finish it off, I think. Oh, they finished it up for their own crew? Or? No, yes, yes. That other uh, Thompson's just left. left. Hmm. Okay. Um, and the only thing that's remaining with the masonry is they could not get some of the paint off the brick, the old paint. It wasn't the new paint that they applied. It was old paint that was on the brick around some of the windows. And um, we just didn't want to apply an acid wash or anything that would take that off. So I left, I let them leave that because for me, it's not a Historical. big deal. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Whitewash. <laughs> but people really like the lighting. We eliminated some of the lighting, but I think what we left is yeah, I saw it the is other good. Night. It looked cool. yeah. pretty cool, the uh, uplights. Yeah. So. so that's that. I, I will be honest with you. It's a project that we are glad is in the rearview mirror. And... Still got to deal with the HVAC though, right? Yes, but yeah. of 
Mm. My 28 years, this is my first over budget and over time. <laughs> and this is one of the smallest that we've ever done. So that's good. It's a smaller one. <sighs> so that's that. Um, Jackie, did you want to do something on the water? Is there any anything that you would like to do? I have pictures of construction if you want to see that I put together, but do you want to see some pictures of construction? Sure. Sure. <laughs> put us all here. What the heck? We have three options. Devin will put it up. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here. I don't know how to advance the slide. I mean, it's not necessarily a slideshow. It was more... I just figured do something different since a ton of the work that's happening now is at District H at the tank and the well station. So it's just an intro slide to each of them and then a bunch of pictures on the, just so you can see the different phases of construction. Um, so recap this, we'll start with the tank. It's almost like $5.7 million contract and we've uh, spent 3.4 to date. It's the same uh, hydraulic grade line is the other tank. So the elevation's around 179 feet. So this one is 135 feet tall. I think the other one might be like five feet lower. But from, the, from grade? Yep. Because the grading at the site's a little different. But then the, the elevation of both of them are the same because it's a gravity fed uh, water system, pressurized. And they're both 750,000 gallons. What's the uh, water usage in the town right now? Depends on the summer. You uh, might know so better. I think it's so like on a day, August, so it's five hundred thousand. Okay. Right. So um, it's mostly for it will help with fires and just we can start taking the other tank offline if we ever needed to for cleaning and things like that. And then we, it was mostly for full build out. So we designed the system for everybody being able to connect. Uh, and then peak usage. What if we paint the outside of the tank? Does it have to be, or do we use it while we do that, or does it have to be shut down while we paint it? On the outside? Yeah. We don't do think. anything to the inside, do we? When... Um, there's there's cleaning. Oh, okay. So. But they have done just visual inspections of the other tank, but they can use the, like, drones, submersible drones. Um. Yeah, so just a bunch of different oh, pictures the, I thought would yeah, be yeah. interesting to see. So that was the other ones, the foundation and saw the rebar that really goes into the concrete. I think there were nine rings. So it's essentially they've been working on the concrete forms. So mm -hmm. they do, you know, one stage at a time and then do the jump forms. So you can see on that one, some of like the form oil that that's what they're working on um, this week is scrubbing all the outside and, and cleaning all the concrete. And then we had, you know, temperature monitors the whole time for the, the concrete to make sure. And they do, when they pour the forms, they pour test forms and all the brake tests on the concrete. Uh, and then in the middle, they have that derrick, which they've been using to kind of lift everything. So they're taking that out this week. And then they'll just use the crane for the rest of the work. That's an amazing piece of the book. Actually, yep. lift the whole so they did like that they welded the steel bowl on the bottom and they do all of the um, x-ray testing and vacuum testing on the cracks on the ground yeah. and they did most of the painting on the ground with localized containment um just because obviously we didn't want paint spraying if you were how's the uh, tank seat on top there yeah, so they have the separate, that's what they poured last week, a separate concrete ring around it. So they, they have Jack pull it up and then pour the thing under for it to sit on? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So they it only took them, I think, two hours to raise it last week. Oh, no wonder I missed it. <laughs> Was it like six? Yeah, right. <laughs> so I think those I took this morning, but just you can see on the inside. Um, they started, they did do like the overflow pipe and some of the ladders and 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 that, but then they'll take out that Derek over the next week. 
and then just big picture schedule. So we're hoping this month they get the Tideflex mixing system. So it's a static mixing system um, for the inside. Today they were working on all the concrete patching on the outside. So all like the just cosmetic bug holes that you get normally with concrete. And then once that's done, there'll be some interior painting that they'll do the electrical work. And then most of the work they CBI is a contractor who does the tank and that's their specialty, but then they subbed it out to RPI. These are the same contractors who did the other tank. So they'll do all of the skate, like the interior piping, SCADA, the electrical work. And then we were slating November for chlorinating and filling the tank. And then hopefully December, all the punch list items. Did the inside of the tank get painted? Yep. So that's the tank. And then the other work at District H you saw in the other pictures um, is the well station. So this one's about like a 30 by 40 foot building, I think, and the other stations are 20 by 30. This one's permitted for a lot more flow, so around uh, 900 gallons per minute, where the other stations are six, 700 gallons a piece. And this site, we have the two production wells in different zones, one in zone B and one in zone C. And that's, you know, heavily permitted by NESHAP and all that to, I th think, zone C, where you can only use 80% and B, 20%. So you can see in the picture, one of the pipings, we have them both coming in, but it's operated so that you can only operate one well at one time. And they can keep track of it that way. It's the same treatment, so hydroxide for pH control to keep it neutral around seven, and then hypo for disinfection. But there's a lot, a lot more chemical storage. You can see in like the bottom right picture, the separate containment area. And then obviously it just gives us more flow, more flexibility. And we are doing all of the vernal pool monitoring now because of the toad breeding seasons and wildlife habitats and the vernal pools we have to we've been just doing a lot of sampling and a lot of data log collection to prove that once we put the well station online it's not going to drain the vernal pools by in inches it yeah if it ever rains again <laughs> so the wells are not on that same site oh uh, they are right. in a different picture so, so production wells, two, you yeah. said one was in zone C and one was in zone B? Yep. So the aquifer, they, it's, um, they have different confining layers. So you'll have A, there's just the top aquifer, then oh. a clay layer that separates A from B. Oh. So I think those are around 150 feet down. And all those little wells that you see, they're, they're all monitoring wells? Mon yep. And they keep them active. It looks like the fencing around it. Right. Yep. So we that's what we've been doing now, all of the sampling and the um, mostly water level monitoring. But we are sampling as well for water quality. Oh, this is the building? Just the yeah. different stages. Rebar and... So this one we did the uh, masonry building as opposed to the precast concrete. It ended up being cheaper. <laughs> Oh, and the biggest. Yeah, well, we ended up bidding it a second time because the bids came in so high the first time. I mean, it's just laid up mason and me units. Mm -hmm. I can't see, that. but then they put that skin around it. Yep, the insulation, the, the orange stuff. Yeah. Oh, and that, that was the terracotta side. Yeah. yeah. Terracotta. It's fragile. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just some of the interior piping, so the two wells, and those would be like the chemical metering pumps on the tanks. So we have the larger tank, bulk chemical storage for usually a monthly, and then day tanks for they usually, I think, DP permits like 30 hours they hold. So it's all based on the flow rates. And then, yeah, those are some of the wells, and they did a lot of the mowing, I think, on Monday, and they're going to hydro seed in the next week. Um, but that's all of, like the riprap for stormwater controls. Yeah, and there's a lot of riprap up there. It's like, I wish I had the riprap contract for that job. Uh, is there, um, is that road going to get paved or is it going to remain a dirt road? 
the, we, the access. We left it dirt and then paved. So they already paved right next to the building where you enter right, in. Saw that, yeah. But then we put in the tank contract for them to pave just the um, area around the building and the turnaround area. But all the access so road. The access road will just be a... Just to make it look natural. Yep. So it's going to be gravel or just sand? Um, it's hard to narrow back. Yeah, like gravel. It will be gra it puts some yeah, it's gravel. It puts gravel over. Not a whole lot of traffic in and out once it gets rolling, right? No. Yeah. If you if you go down um, um, in Wildwood, you can see their road is very similar, and the trees have just grown in. So all the people that were yeah. they were all upset about the they, clear cutting will they grow right back. they'll feel better. Mm. As the uh, um, the first tower isn't that what came in over budget right off the bat yes because uh, it was we had estimated it at two and a half million yeah, dollars but then everything else yeah, was great just, how about this one this, this one this was also a lot higher than we a thought a little higher than budget which estimate. was just a weird situation because we got the cost estimate from the contractor who won it <laughs> then they were kind of like oh i guess we didn't read the plans that well and then we yeah, did it they're like it's more love it when that I, they blamed all the the permitting stuff and things like that but it wasn't we didn't have like all the bells and whistles it, it was pretty basic contract but i think there was a lot of work at the time and a lot of other bids out too larger bids in texas too so what's the story with all that rip rap are they expecting that much runoff is that what well, it's for we had some on the shoulders just from the grading, <laughs> but then all of that rip rap, we, we actually didn't originally have that completely in the contract, but it just ended up eroding so much oh. that we added it in more just like shifting based on site conditions. But we didn't, obviously we didn't want, we found that the main issue was not even just the erosion. It was that the wells from that picture are where some of the production wells are, and we can't just leave them. They were sitting in water essentially full time. So we raised it up with the riprap. And then if we could catch as much going to that area, it would stop it from popping. And then raise it up so we would meet like DEP regulations of the distance or if it did pond. Uh, what What's the staffing um, when that? control center is finished is that basically automated or are people there monitoring how does that work um well we do have an operator that will is required to visit the site every day but it is pretty much automated through SCADA so you have the chemical metering pumps already set to and that's what we did as part of the design and we'll put together in the O&M manual about what the expectation is um so the wells will turn on kind of like the system does normally depending on the tank height if they need to come on or not and if they're on they, they already have chemical analyzers in the station that measure um, residual chlorine and ph and then it will make adjustments where the alarms go off where, where do they go off? yeah if, if there's issues yeah if there's issues yeah well, well, it's, it's, I guess, it's the SCADA report? system where's to whitewater oh okay that's radio that, that, is that building pretty full of equipment at this point? I mean, I saw the photos. It looked pretty full. And what I'm wondering is... It's if, it's messy. They need to clean up. If so. you need, uh, you know, iron filtration or PFAS filtration down the road, you have to build another building or just... Right, yeah. Not going to fit in there. No. Is there... Um, how's the water looking at down in, the, in that those wells? Is it any iron? We haven't seen much iron so, there. In the original, all of the sampling we've done so far, no PFAS. Where does that leave us with my monthly question? question. <laughs> Where does that leave us what's left, the remaining authorization? Um, and how does that tie into the USDA bond? Yeah, so it's just, I don't want to promise a number, but I think we were thinking around 10 million under. Um, and then depending on what we do with contract 23. And then I think we just have a couple other questions about what things you want to do or not want to do with that money. Um, and then I think last time we talked, I went back to USDA 
and they they were similar to SRF in the sense that if we have the money appropriated, they would be okay allocating it further. They but just have to look. Email, the remaining authorization, because this is the final SRF. Um, these are the final contracts, and we've borrowed these through SRF. Right. We've got bond authorizations for SRF through that. So what was left after was something like 13 million, I think it was. Right. I think that's because of contract 23. Right. So, if, so if we do nothing with contract 20, if you don't do a contract 23, well, it's either, you know, 10 and some change or 13 approximately. Mm -hmm. And so with that, that's probably coming in front of the committee too, right? Because mm -hmm. the closing out of this is revisiting repaving of roads. So might be a phase where we have to get prices on that. And kind of my thought process was, you know, if this is if US, what's the timeline on the USDA? Because it's a little... Um, I can't think of the right word, but um, I'm sure we'll find, especially with the repaving the roads, I'm sure we'll find a use for the 10 or $13 million. I'm not too worried about it having perfect because borrowing it through the USDA is still a, was it like a 1% or 2% loan? Right. And the and they keep a, changing the number, but the most recent one they told me a couple of weeks ago was 25% grant. Awesome. But, so do they have deadlines for, I'm sorry, do they have deadlines for applying and stuff or can you, is it like wrong? Well, it's strange because we already applied a long time ago and then we already applied for phase one. So they have all of our kind of paperwork. They just keep kind of adjusting it to when we need it or how much oh, we want. Okay. And they just only told me they might need a few more like updated financial paperwork from the initial one, but that okay. it's not the same process because we're already in the system. So it's a... A very low percent interest rate payback, and it's also a forty-year payback, and it comes with up to a twenty-five percent grant. So, in my opinion, we should borrow as much bond authorization we have. It's the cheapest money we're ever going to get, and if we end up not using some amount of it, we can always reappropriate it, and that could go towards wastewater as a similar project. So, So, Jackie, we still have to get the road. We still have to have a conversation about the road repaving. Okay. Thank you. I guess the last thing is that we're kind of on schedule for all the construction to December. I'm just not as confident on this because it's really just Eversource that's holding everything up. Um, so and Verizon yeah, for um, months. But they're halfway done. Like it, they did do the poll that if you noticed on Nosset Road to get three phase power to the site. But so we just have temporary power there now. Awesome. I think that's it for today. No, no wastewater update. No wastewater update for today. Okay.